Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this video, I'm gonna go over why I quit my nine to five and why I started my own business. How it's going, what it took, what was scary, and what's going well. So I graduated from college in 2017 and I got a really, really good job right after college. Uh, I'm not gonna say what company it was because you probably never heard of it and it doesn't really matter. Uh, it was a sales job. I always knew I was really good with people and building relationships and trust uh, and I need money and I love money so I was like sales. Sales is the way to go. So I got a company to hire me right out of college. It was like a $60,000 base pay uh, plus, you know, commission. Really great job. There was like 500 applicants and they only picked one and it was me. Very special. I'm very special. And I worked there for about a year. And this is how it went. Working for a big corporation is cool. It is cool to be a part of a big thing that has a good reputation or not. Um, and be included in this big, exciting new thing. Uh, but that dwindled very quickly. I soon realized that it was not big and exciting, that it was big and pretty fraudulent. One of the first things that one of my advisors told me is that in this business of corporate sales, you gotta be a bit dodgy. He was English. He said, you gotta be a bit dodgy. Uh, things like getting someone to sign something that you say is not a contract, that it's just a agreement or whatever, and then they're tied into a contract. And by the time that they let the company know that they didn't mean to sign that, you've already been paid and it doesn't matter. So I, I realized I was making these sales that weren't going through and I was still getting paid. And it was just, working in a void. I wasn't making any difference in anyone's life and the money wasn't worth it. It's not like I was making a lot of money. Um, and I just, I quickly realized that there's no sense of pride in, at least in this situation, working for this company. And I'm young, like I'm starting off my life right now and I want to develop my talents and become the absolute best version of myself that I can be. Um, and working for this company was absolutely not getting me in that direction. Working for any company, obviously this isn't all companies, there's some good companies out there. But working sales for a corporate company, you need to make sales all the time. So you make a sale one week, great, awesome, here's some money, now you have to do it again. It's all new business, you have to keep generating new business, which is how all business works. But I was basically starting from square one every single week and all the work that I did the previous week did not roll over into the next week. I did a bunch of sales week one, it didn't matter. Week two, I had to do that all again in order to maintain that sense of value in the company, which is ridiculous. And working, like developing my sales skills is really important, but it left no room for me to develop anything else. I'm, I'm pretty creative, I like art and music, and um, there, there's just so many other things that I want to develop besides sales, and at the end of the day, I had no energy left to do anything, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything. I committed my days to selling a stupid product that was overpriced, and it wasn't a good service, and... I didn't feel good about what I was doing and I wasn't really growing. I sort of did enough work where that my boss was like, a good job, but I didn't do anything else. So if I got a sale and kind of didn't really do anything to get it, my boss might be like, wow, really good job this week. You did amazing. When really I didn't actually do anything. The sale kind of fell into my lap. And then I, and then I would have this false sense of satisfaction of like, yeah, I'm doing really well when I wasn't. The sale fell into my lap. I didn't really do anything to get that sale. The sale isn't gonna mean anything to me next week. I'm gonna get paid for it and then it's gone. And so their idea of success was just numbers instead of like how much work I'm actually putting in and how much how many relationships I'm, I'm building and how those relationships are going. It was just numbers. So if you got numbers in, you're doing great. Well, I'm, I'm not actually doing great. I actually didn't do anything this week. These sales fell into my lap and like you're telling me I'm doing a great job. No, I'm not. 
and vice versa. If I if I worked really, really hard but didn't land any numbers that week, they'd be like, what the hell are you doing? You're not doing anything. Like, yes, I am. I'm building these relationships. It's coming along. Give me some time, you know? So it was just a false sense of success, at least what they wanted me to do. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't successful. What they wanted in like their eyes of success was not success to me. And it's interesting if if I like wake up and they're like, all right, you gotta be in the office from whatever, nine to five. I have this dread that comes over me. It's like, ugh, I have to be there doing this one thing all day. Whereas if I'm doing my own thing, I'll get up, the world is my oyster, and I'll work 14 hours straight, forget to eat, because I'm so invested and committed in growing what I'm growing. And like that, that's success to me, working like a 12 hour day, best I can. That is a successful day, whether or not I make a sale or not. It's a, if to me, the, the success is the energy output, the massive action that I take in order to achieve these goals, not necessarily just achieving them. The company would decide what's worth my time. So they would, you know, tomorrow morning we're having a, a corporate meeting about office etiquette for three hours. Okay, that's a total waste of time. That's a total waste of time. I could be making calls in those three hours. I could be making a plan. I could be eating lunch. I could be doing anything else that's actually productive instead of these dumb events that are mandatory that actually benefit nobody. And there's so much of that in corporate America and I could not stand it. And it's not even that they actually cared about corporate etiquette. They just wanted us to do this to cover their own asses. It's all just a big ruse, really, working for a big company. So like if I'm running my own company, I could wake up and if I had plans to do X this morning, but I decide, ooh, that can actually wait. It's more important that I do this, this, and this. I have full autonomy of my day. I can just go do this, this, and this and get back to X later. I can decide what's important and what's not. There's so much ass kissing for promotions or even just like if I wanted to go into someone else's territory, I just had to like smooch their butt and um, yeah, the amount of politics involved and like, and like demonstrating to people that like, oh, I'm actually working hard. There was a lot of like, oh, let me look at my, let me look at my computer and really look like I'm, I'm working hard because that'll actually get me by. If I look like I'm working hard and I have numbers coming in, then no one's gonna question if I'm working hard, but really I may have not worked at all that week and I'm gonna feel shitty about myself for not really having grown or done anything productive. But in their eyes, I may have been productive and they don't care, you know, they just care about numbers. The other thing is I had to deal with the current reputation of the company, which was usually not good. It was a really expensive product, it was a service, and the service was not good. Our competitors had a way better service and I was basically confronted with our crappy reputation every time I wanted to make a sale. And I had nothing to do with that. So all of a sudden I'm adapting this reputation from a corporate company that's been around forever and all of a sudden I have to defend their shitty values and their shitty system of making sales and stuff. It's just like, why? Why, would I, why am I doing this to myself? I didn't make these bad decisions, the company did. Now I have to argue for it and I don't even really believe what I'm arguing for. So what I realized was I have a talent with people and conveying trust and building relationships, I'm hardworking, genuine. And so I started my own company and everything is, is for me and my client. It has nothing to do with this third party that governs what I do. Everything I do is for me and my client. And that's the relationship I care about. You know, making sure I have my sales by Monday morning, even if that means stepping on people's toes and lying, doesn't matter. As long as my boss sees that I have these numbers, I'm doing good. It's just a totally corrupt, bad way to live life. And obviously not all businesses are like this. You can work for a nine to five and, and have a good life. But this is, this is what happened to me. This is why I chose what I chose. So when I sign a client, <clears throat> if it takes three months, I have that client for the rest of my life, hopefully, if I do well. Sales job, you get a client, you get paid once and it's gone, you gotta do it again. When I land a client, I can nurture that relationship and I can build upon it and I will have it forever. I do a lot of hard work to get that client, but once I have them, it's pretty easy. And I can kind of coast from there on out and allocate my energy to other new business while keeping that business. The other, the other personality trait that led me to start my own business is I have crazy ADD, like I'm just all over the place but it's awesome for starting a business because there's so many different things that you need to do 
you can't just focus on sales. Like if I just did sales, my business wouldn't get off the ground. You need to do sales and then you gotta do admin work. You gotta work on your, your actual craft. You gotta buy supplies. You gotta learn, you gotta educate yourself. Um, you gotta do market research. There's just so many other things that you need to do to grow a business besides just sales. And so having ADD allows me to run around and do all these different things when I'm sick of doing one thing. So I'll do sales for a little bit and I'll be like, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I'll go educate myself on new tools or I'll go and look at different markets or I'll see what like my competition is doing well. So there's, there's a uh, room to be ADD in starting a business. In fact, you really need to be ADD to start a business because you can't just, there comes a point where you're working on something and it comes to a standstill and there's actually nothing you can do at that point, whether it's waiting for a reply from an email or waiting for a product to get delivered or, or whatever. There's a point where you can't really push any, you can't push the stone further down the road anymore. So you have to kind of switch gears and start working on something else. So that's where having ADD has been really helpful in being able to work on something, push that as far as I can push it and then switch gears, go to something else, push that as far as I can push it uh, and sort of just create this cycle and rotation of, of allocating my energy to different things that I decide are important. Another thing is when I was working for somebody else, it was just work. It was just work, it was just income. And then the idea was with that income, I can build a life that I wanna live. Um, and it was, it was two different things, it was work and play. But now running my own business, I sort of have developed this, this response to my work that is play response. That didn't make a whole lot of sense. So like when I get a client, that is so fun. When I work, 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 and something good happens, that is so fun. So it's really sort of collapsed the two worlds of work and play. Like I'm kind of playing this game with my business and it's like playing Monopoly. Every step that I take is one step closer to where I wanna be. And those highs are so high when, when you're doing it for yourself and for your client and for your life. Um, my work really is my play. Like I get up and I'm so excited to push the puck down the field or whatever. I keep saying the wrong, you, you know what I'm trying to say. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's exciting. It's hard. It's challenging. It's draining, but it's so fun. Um, so it's interesting how, how like, like I would never feel that in a corporate job. I'd never be like, oh, this is so fun. But doing that stuff for myself is really fun. Like I don't really go out that much anymore. I don't date anybody. I mean, I will that one day but I'm just having so much fun growing this little baby and taking care of it and feeding it and giving it kisses. And, and one of the biggest things was, for me, was I didn't have time for anything else. I didn't have time for art or music or friends. Like I wanna learn Spanish, I can't do that if, I'm, if I have a corporate job, end of the day I'm just absolutely drained. So if I do really well and get a lot of stuff done in a couple days, I can take a day off, take a day off and learn Spanish. I haven't, but I need to. Or learn a new trade, woodworking. Um, I started a YouTube channel recently. Like I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to do all these passion projects if I was working for a nine to five because it's just so demanding. And it's so, you're so fixed in one job area. You can't do other things because your job is sales or your job is marketing or your job is this. There's You, you don't get to do other things. So basically I, I wanna live a life that I love and I wanna become really good at something. And I wanna build it myself. And I wanna learn how to be self-sufficient. And I have all these talents. And the only way for me to do all those things and develop my talents is to be my own man, and be my own boss, run my own company, live my own day and be responsible for all the time that I use or waste. And it's going really well. It's going awesome. I really enjoy it. Building, a, uh, starting a business is like, is that tree gonna break or what? Just do it. Take me out. Just kidding. Um, building a business Building a business is like this. <clears throat> it's like trying to print something out of a printer. And you've used a printer before, but it's been a couple years. 
so you, you pull up your document, you, you click print, uh, printer says, printer's out of ink, okay? So you go get ink, you come back, put the ink cartridge in, you press print, it says, out of ink. You go, what? So you go to the settings, and it says, oh, it's actually clicked on color, not black and white. So you go, okay, you click on black and white, it says it's okay. So you just bought an ink cartridge for no reason, but that's okay, now you have, now you have some more ink. You go and click print, and it says, paper is not in rear tray. Okay, well, I'm not trying to print from the rear tray. I'm trying to print from the bottom tray. Couldn't figure it out. Okay, so you put paper in the rear tray, you press print. And then the paper gets jammed in the printer. It turns out the printer was broken the whole time. You have to go buy a new printer. So now you've wasted a couple hours trying to just print something. Bought a new printer, bought ink. The ink doesn't actually go with the new printer, and you're just already in a hole. So that's, that sounds really negative, but that's kind of what it's like to start a business. It's very, like, shh shooting a freaking bird in the dark it's just a lot of trial and error it can be exhausting at first the learning curve um, time allocation it was really hard for me at first I was like all right I have all day to do whatever I want what do I do so there's there's definitely a learning curve there and it takes discipline and and commitment um, which are all good things to learn um, the first year I started my business, I made like $20,000, which is nothing. Um, and that was like four years ago. And then this past year I made just over $100,000, which is also like not a lot of money. Like I didn't save any of it. I don't have $100,000. It all went back into my business. So like I'm still broke as shit. But there's so much potential. There's so many things moving. There's so much... Yeah, there's so much movement. There's... there's um, I have... A lot of clients who are really happy with what I'm doing. I'm making big jumps in county contracts, and it's all it's all from me. It all came from me, and it's just so validating. I feel like I've grown so much over the past couple of years, and it's only gonna get bigger with with maybe less effort. Like the mo <clears throat> the most effort I put in was at the beginning of the business, and it's already kind of like coasting it's already going really well I'm not gonna stop working and keep working really hard and make it as, as big as I can make it but I definitely made the right decision going off on my own it was really scary really intimidating but it came from a really really unwavering belief in my abilities in my work ethic in my ability to convey trust and grow a relationship and my hunger I was really hungry I I was raised well really good parents and sisters and um, you know I've got a dog in me I'm I'm out there to I'm out there to win and I don't I don't want to win for somebody else I want to win for me and my client you know so I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope that this gave you some idea of what it's like to start a business or, or um, whether you're feeling these emotions, maybe it'll help you decide or not decide whether that's something that you wanna do. I say do it. I can always get a corporate job. I, have, I haven't been employed in many years and if they ask, well, what did you do, do during this off time? I started a business, bro. I started a business. Have you ever done that? So I can always get a job if I need to. If, if something goes south, you can always still get a job. So I'm young, I have a lot of energy. I think I have a lot of potential. So I decided to take a leap and see what I can make out of myself. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. It's a beautiful one. Be safe, be kind. I'll see you next time. Love you.